Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Gigi and my channel is Gigi's Gems and Jewels. I hope you're all well and doing fine and everything in your world is, um, you know, absolutely terrific. Uh, I have quite a few things today that I want to show you and I want to show you some things that I have I haven't been to many thrift stores over the last few weeks um, due to my dad's illness and being in and out of hospitals and all that kind of stuff. That's good, sort of taken up a lot of my time. Um, at the moment, he's stable. Uh, he's in a good place. Uh, his treatment is changing and we've got a lot of things that are going on regarding my dad. Um, but I just wanted to uh, just say hello to all of you and tell you all that I love you and thank you for your beautiful emails and your prayers and your kind words. I've received so many beautiful emails regarding um, my dad and um, checking in on me and that has been absolutely really terrific. I can't even tell you how much that has meant to me. You know, I have to be honest with you. I've had some great days and I've had some pretty shocking days. I've had days where I've been in a really, really good place and I'm coping and I'm dealing with things really well and I'm really stoic about everything. And then there's moments where I'm driving along in the car and I just break down and I just cry because everything either becomes way too overwhelming for me or there's just the thought of my dad, you know, losing my dad and my dad not being around. And that's another thing, you know, that this whole thing has brought us closer and our relationship has really, really kind of developed into this amazing friendship and something I never had with my dad when I was younger. My dad was always working. I was always working with him, but we never really got to know one another. He was just my dad and he was a very strict dad. He was a Greek dad and we never really got to know one another. And through this journey, I have gotten to know my father. I've gotten to know stories about my family and, uh, and get to know things about my grandparents and things that I never knew. And this is one of the reasons why I'm going to be doing this show today. And it's all about inheriting things, um, heirlooms, things that we've uh, been given by family. And a lot of it is stuff that my parents had held on to uh, for myself, things that, you know, uh, that my mum had been using and now of late she's just passing on to myself and to my daughter and today is going to be an interesting eclectic kind of collection. I've got a couple of um, uh, bric-a-brac or hard goods if you want to sort of call them that um, that I found at the flea markets and a few vintage necklaces that I have found along along the way but primarily it's a lot of the stuff that I've just kind of inherited from my mum and my dad and my daughter now has uh, inherited as well. And there's some beautiful pieces here that I want to share with you and delight you with and just uh, just enjoy the content of just looking at jewellery and enjoying all of that. But I have got a notebook and I've written some stuff down that I wanted to address. So give me one second. I'm just going to grab my notebook, which I was supposed to have here while I was sitting down, but I had completely forgotten about. And I actually, this is a piece that I'm wearing today that I did thrift, which I love. Uh, I just absolutely love this piece to bits. I think someone over polished it or did something to it because it is sterling silver. It is 925 and I don't know if you can see, hang on, that's my little kookaburra there. Uh, it's amethyst and sterling and I do have it on my shorts and I did take a loop to that and it does look like turquoise and not howlite. I don't know what the other stones are, but it is very delicious and very beautiful and I do love it and it's very much me and uh, I was very, very happy when I found that and I, and to be honest, I paid $5 for this and it was in the costume jewellery section and I absolutely love it. Uh, just my sterling bracelets that I've already shown you guys, my little Israeli earrings, uh, my bracelets that I shared with you guys in my last video and that's pretty much uh, uh, the look today uh, with my jewellery. 
So uh, before we get stuck into the jewellery, there are a couple of things that uh, I want to address, which were uh, some emails that I received uh, from a few of you guys out there. Uh, one is uh, my style. And I, I got asked, you know, uh, about my style and, you know, how, how I, you know, I dress and the kind of style I have. And it was really quite... At first, I mean, even Tanya from My Jewelry Addiction said some beautiful things about me, you know, um, about my style and, and, and you know, uh, how I'm presented and stuff like that. And I don't see that. I, I just kind of see it as me. And I don't sort of, you know, the type of things that I wear obviously have evolved over the years, you know, from being a teenager, obviously, in the 80s growing up with, uh, I was really kind of, I went into the new romantic kind of look, but I also kind of really enjoyed punk and I really was into punk music. So I would wear, you know, like thick opaque stockings, Dr. Martin boots, you know, tartan skirts, you know, black tops and things like that. I was kind of really into music for a very you know for a very long time went to see many many bands in the 80s and the 90s uh my style kind of changed in the 90s it was kind of like you know I wore a lot of jeans uh, uh you know a lot of jeans I always wore my Chuck Taylors I still wear Chuck Taylors to this day they're just my favorite pair of shoes I do have a pair of sensible runners you know uh comfortable um uh Reeboks that I wear all the time you know if I need to run out and grab things you know I I, my style is quite simplistic. It's usually my jewellery that tells a story. I, you know, uh, by my late 20s, I was into kind of boho, sort of that Stevie Nicks sort of flowy kind of thing, you know. Uh, I was a single mum. I had um, I had my son, uh, you know, um, and I'm a grandmother and, um, you know, he's 30 years of age and, you uh, you know, I was always thrifting and trying to find the best type of clothes that I could wear. And I really was drawn to that kind of boho kind of style. Uh, I think by the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, my style again changed. You know, I used to cut my hair. I used to dye it black. I used to dye it red. And then, you know, in my early 30s, my style again started changing and evolving with me. And I was always... Uh, I never kind of followed trend or fashion, even though I loved fashion and I love beautiful fabrics and textiles and things like that. It was just kind of not my thing. I just dressed for myself. I was inspired. Don't get me wrong. There was an inspiration there for me. And uh, there are many designers out there that I absolutely have a lot of respect for and love. But it was not something that drove me to be you know um, on trend so to speak it was always just my individualistic personality that I always felt comfortable dressing the way that I like to dress and I got all these beautiful emails and uh, this particular woman said I can't believe that you're actually 56 you know you're you're, you're in your 50s and you know you're you're getting older uh, not getting older but your style um, really really suits you and it inspires me and I want to know where you get your things and you know how you wear them and stuff and I just pretty much, you know, I have been a denim girl all my life, even when I was doing all the changes in my life as far as, you know, dressing was concerned. I have been wearing jeans for as long as I can remember. And usually jeans and um, nice flowy tops now, you know, like I think I said in one of my videos, I love like natural fabrics on my skin. I love things like linen and cottons and uh, silks and things like that. But everything, pretty much 90% of what I own has been thrifted. And it's just something that, uh, you know, if I see something like I have this beautiful like kimono style um, uh, jackets that I wear, I'll show you one that I just thrifted a while ago in my next video. It's this beautiful, it's like a 1930s Chinese robe uh, with roses and, and everything. And it's in uh, a beautiful heavy satin and I could uh, wear that with a black, you know, like a black top underneath. Uh, uh, black pants or jeans and have that hanging and then sort of just wearing my jewels and just kind of going that way you know and I and I do sometimes I just you know when I go to the grocery stores and stuff you know I it it it, it depends on how I'm feeling on the day you know going to the hospitals and running around with dad 
I usually just you know pop on whatever is really comfortable for the day because there's a bit of running around you know I'll have a pair of jeans on you know a, a, a shirt uh, maybe you know a couple of pieces of silver jewelry and that's pretty much it and I, lately I've just been putting my hair in, my, in a bun because I don't know what to do with it at the moment uh, I cut a, a lot off I woke up one morning and uh, I just woke up I, it was in a dream that I actually had bent my this is how I used to always cut my hair and I still do it is bend my hand, hair over and then just sort of grab it at the end and then just chop it off and that day I just felt like I needed to cut a whole bit off and I cut about that much of my hair off usually I have this bit that's sort of hanging over but I just cut it all off. I've been wearing it back a lot lately because it's just comfortable and easy for me. And I don't know, I used to have bobs and all sorts of things, but having a bob is just trying to maintain it. And then I want to grow it out again so I can pull it back. So I'm sort of, you know, whatever. But I haven't colored my hair. Uh, going on to my daughter was either 11 or 12. So I'm going to say about eight or nine years. I've just kind of let my hair grow out naturally. I have a lot of natural silver in my hair underneath there's a lot of still there's a lot of that mousy brown and what have you and it's sort of you know a lot of silver on the outside but a lot of dark underneath and uh, there are moments where I just want to go to the supermarket and grab dye you know because I, I just think oh should I do it and change the color and I used to love having red hair but red is always really hard to maintain so answering that question regarding that email um, actually a couple of them is just what my advice is just kind of be true to yourself and if you want to experiment and play around with clothing and jewelry and stuff like that just do it just do it you know you know uh, you get to an age where uh, I think the beauty of getting older and I think this is one of the gifts of the things that we don't know when we're younger and when we're younger we're always worried about what other people are going to say or how we're going to be perceived or or their judgment of us you know and and you worry about what they think well, I don't, I don't care what people think anymore. I really don't. You know, I, I am who I am and I dress the way that I like to dress. I, I love, uh, you know, having simple clothing. I, 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 you know, too many patterns are not my thing. I don't wear, you know, a lot of patterns, but some people look fantastic in patterns, you know. I sometimes, if I want colour, I have a burst of colour with scarves and, uh, you know, maybe a colourful jacket or, or you know, colourful pants or something like that. But the patterning for me, because I'm a large-breasted woman and stuff, it sort of doesn't work the way that it would have if you know I don't know it's just the way I perceive myself and how I feel and if and, and if I and I don't feel comfortable in that so for me it's always just a blank canvas and usually it's my jewelry that tell the story you know I remember years ago um, when I was younger I used to kind of create stories and one of my favorite ones was when I discovered you know how I could tell a story without you know being I don't know like I'll ex for an example I one day I wanted to be a sailor and so I had like a kind of like a French sort of type of look as well and I had a Greek sailor's cap and uh, a red and white scarf a blue and white striped top and some baggy white linen pants and some white sand shoes and I had a couple of cuffs either side of my my wrist and you know and that day was a day of being a sailor, you know. So I would create these little stories in my head and, you know, uh, as far as my m m the way I wanted to dress and, and be. So uh, And being over 50 or being over 40, you know, we're told we can't wear certain things, we can't dress certain ways, you know, that you're too old for that. Well, I don't buy that, you know. I don't buy it. It doesn't matter. It's what you feel comfortable in, you know. Being age-appropriate, I think, went out. It should have gone out. It should never have even been around. But, you know, gone out a long time ago. But looking back even in the 80s, my aunties that were in their 40s and 50s always looked so old to me. Women now in their 40s, 50s and 60s, even in their 70s, I don't view them as old, maybe because I'm closer to that age, but it's just, it, 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 it's all up to the individual, right? And you are who you are. And if you 
take risks you know some people don't want to take risks and i get that you know when it comes to you know the way they dress and what have you maybe wear a big big cuff one day or or big earrings or whatever makes you feel good just do it because what i've recognized and this is again the theme to what today is all about is time catches up with us and you know i have been questioning my mortality with what my dad is going through and being in and out of those hospitals and being in oncology units and seeing seeing you know um so many things and it can be very very confronting right and so it's to me it's changing me in so many ways on 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 such a larger scale of how I view life, my beliefs, um, you know, my faith in, 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 in God, my faith in humanity, my faith in uh, so many things, you know, and, and, you know, where I was and where my beliefs were in my 20s are very different to where they are in, in, in my 50s. And, you know, I'm sorry if this is a rambling video, but I just kind of wanted to tell a story before I started showing these pieces, because this is the reason why I'm showing these pieces is these are things that will be, you know, left behind when we're gone and who is going to inherit them and who's going to appreciate them and who's going to enjoy them. Are you going to enjoy, enjoy them while you're still here? And, you know, like I said in my previous videos, and again, I'm not going back into it, but I did get some amazing, I inherited some beautiful, beautiful pieces of jewellery. Not only were they vintage, they were antique and they were stolen and they're gone. And, you know, but my parents held on to a few beautiful pieces that they have now passed on to me and to my daughter and my daughter loves jewelry and she enjoys it and you know this is this is going to continue and when she or, or if she decides to have a family she will pass these on and they will continue to move on and this is what that whole thing of to me inheritance is and you know sometimes we might not inherit jewelry we might inherit I don't know a vase from Annie Mae or an, a piece of art or a dress or or whatever it is you know it has a history it has a connection to somebody it has a connection this is why when we find vintage pieces they all have a story each and every one of them have a story they were somewhere they were sitting on someone's cupboard someone wore them someone loved them and that's the beauty of of this whole vintage you know re, re reusing and repurposing and reloving you know and uh yeah, I kind of think I've meandered and I've gone off in a tangent again like I do. But it was just, you know, because I didn't thrift much this time around. So I thought, what can I do to give you guys? And, you know, I'm 17 minutes in and I'm having a conversation and, you know, I, I, I don't want this to be boring in any way or form. But I just wanted to touch base regarding that and regarding those emails that I had received and, I am more than happy to, you know, uh, if there's anything that you want to ask me, like many have, I got um, asked about my eye makeup, my blue eye makeup, you know, um, this lady asked me what brand I use and what have you, and uh, it's, I don't use brands, I get whatever I can find in blue. I love uh, using blue eyeliner and blue mascara. I've used blue mascara and eyeliner since 1982. I'm 57 next month, so do the math. That's pretty sort of, you know, a long time. I haven't really changed my style of makeup at all. Usually uh, it's always going to be, if I don't wear eyeliner, it'll be a little bit of blue mascara and, you know, a little bit of my bronzer just to give me a little bit of colour. And uh, in the 90s, it was the red lips. So I was really into the red and I wore a lot of red lipstick, a lot of black eye, sort of light eyeliner, black mascara. I was really kind of into the reds and the red nail polish and stuff like that. But, you know, eyeshadows and stuff like that, I sort of never really got into it. And uh, I know it suits a lot of people. It was just something that I never sort of got into. And so as far as the blue makeup is concerned, uh, it's been something I've worn for a very long time and I probably will till the day I go. You know, it's just one of my favourite things. It's just a struggle with not being able to see properly and then putting your glasses on and see what you've missed and what you haven't missed and fixing it up. So 
another thing is I had an inquiry regarding my prices and uh, and I want to be able to sort of bring this to your attention. This uh, lady had inquired about a piece of mine that she was really, really interested in. And I had quoted her, uh, I think it was around, I think it was $45.00. And she emailed me back and she said, oh, wow, that's really expensive for that piece. And she's American. And I said to her, that's $45 Australian. And it turns out to be $29.37 US. So my dollar is weaker than the American dollar. So if it's 45 Australian dollars, it's closer to $30 US. Now, if that's in reverse... Uh, if it's $45 US, it's $69 uh, Australian. So that's the difference of the currency. So if you're selling something in the US for $45, over my end, it'll be $69 Australian dollars. So that's, you know, that's a huge difference for me. But for you guys, if you're, you know, interested in buying something from Australia, and you know it's in reverse and it's 45 bucks then it's 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 literally 30 dollars uh us do you know what i mean so then when i responded to her message she was quite happy and she said oh, okay i'll pay that so yeah that's what i i wanted to also explain is the currency conversion and um the changes in in um in in that uh what else okay that's it and that's what i want to touch base with and just kind of um just have a bit of a chat and, and sort of get you updated and regarding just some of the emails that I've been receiving and I've been receiving some beautiful emails uh, from so many beautiful people. So let's get started with the jewellery and uh, I think I'll show you the jewellery first and then we'll I'll show you some of the thrift hauls. So uh, the stuff that we were given by my mum just recently are absolutely beautiful. My daughter got given some gorgeous rings by my mum and um and i also want to show you a gorgeous ring that we got my daughter uh for her uh 18th birthday her graduation and uh you know it is absolutely stunning and i'll tell you the story about that in a minute so what we received from mum are absolutely beautiful and the first ring that we got now none of these fit me so they've gone directly to my daughter is this beautiful um it's a beautiful mid-century pearl diamond set in 18 karat gold and it is one of the most beautiful rings i think i have ever seen with a pearl and my daughter loves it and actually it's my mum's 80th birthday tomorrow we went out and had her birthday lunch yesterday and um if you can see there those little beautiful diamonds and the way it stands she wore it yesterday at my mum's birthday lunch and she my mum was just absolutely chuffed to see her wearing it the other ring is absolutely gorgeous again in itself it's a it's a thai princess ring my father had a very very good friend who was thai and about 30 years ago my dad had traveled maybe a little bit more, 30, 35 years ago, travelled to Thailand. He was looking at um, bringing in jewellery at the time because this man was a jeweller and he took my dad around Thailand to have a look at the dif different types of jewellery. And my dad bought my mum this beautiful, hang on, Thai princess, gorgeous ring, which I'm sure a lot of you know about these rings. And again, it doesn't fit me. And my daughter has inherited this this beautiful, beautiful uh, Thai princess ring. And she loves it and she wears it. So, you know, for special occasions, she'll put that on. And that's another thing that's been passed down, you know, um, by my family to, to us. Can you see that? It's absolutely beautiful. And so these all tell stories. These all are a part of that history and, you know, and I love it. And she also, um, my mum asked me if I was interested in um, her wedding band and her engagement ring. And unfortunately, because my hands are quite large and they swell uh, and my daughter has beautiful tiny fingers, she gave my daughter, and these don't fit my mum anymore. So this is my mum's 
can I get a focus on that? Uh, I don't know if I can. Can you see that? Um, hang on, am I going too close? It's a, it's a beautiful set and my dad bought this engagement ring for her. They were engaged in 1965 and married in 1966 and I was born in 1967. And I'll pull them out and it's white gold with yellow gold. There's that acid thing again. Um, oh, I'm not getting a good picture. There you go. You can see it there. This beautiful ring and this. Um, so she she got to inherit my mum's beautiful engagement and wedding band that my dad um, had given my mum. She also, from me, got my Russian wedding band, um, which is the tri-colour band that fits her. It does no longer fit me. And they're quite popular. And Cartier does all these and, um, you know, other jewellers do them as well. She got this gorgeous little croissant ring, which is a sign of its time. Um, can you see that? It's got three little diamonds in there. It's in the shape of a croissant. It's really kind of high up. And these are things that she's going to wear. And, you know, when my mum is gone, she's always going to know that these were her grandmothers and she, she, she'll remember my mum. But I remember my mum wearing these. And, you know, the memory of, of that is quite vivid in my mind because my mother always dressed beautifully and still does impeccably. And uh, even at 80, she still, you know, loves to dress up and, and she kind of has an iris at full feel, but not so, so full. But uh, she loves to stack on her pieces and stuff and she looks amazing. So, yeah, she inherited that little gorgeous ring, which my daughter, again, all of these are worn. All of these are worn. She loves them. Uh, she got this beautiful, beautiful globe. And um, on this beautiful globe, I actually did research this and I and I found it actually for around $900 and the name of the, the countries are on this. And um, I was quite surprised. It's solid gold and it is absolutely beautiful. My dad had bought that for my mum in the early 90s. And so, you know, she can pop that on a chain and wear it because she sometimes likes to wear charms and what have you. And she loved that. And and mum said, you know, she she's not, you know, wearing it anymore and, you know, doesn't no longer sort of her aesthetic. So she gave her that and she gave her a couple of other beautiful little pendants. Um, this, sorry, I say um quite a lot. I've got to stop doing that. Uh, I do apologise. Uh, this gorgeous little onyx and diamond pendant which I remember my mum wearing all the time and I have again vivid memories of my mum receiving that from my dad and wearing it and it's absolutely lovely and this gorgeous little love heart which is like a little sardine can which sort of winds up hang on can you see that bit and you put it through the chain and it's got little diamonds in there and it's just a gorgeous little piece and uh, and she loves that as well. So those are some of the things that we inherited. I think uh, that is it. I'm just trying to think. I'm just looking in my daughter's jewellery box at the moment to see what else is in here. I can't really see any more. So that's that from mum. I also got given two chains. Uh, this is sterling. And uh, hang on a second. What I'll do is I will pop it on a bust. It's very heavy. It's 950 sterling. And it came with this gorgeous little uh, filigree egg. And it's quite a heavy chain. And it's absolutely beautiful. And where the hook is there, it says 950. And she used to wear it with this little egg hanging on it. And she would wrap it around her neck pretty much like this and have that little thing hanging there. And that little egg is beautiful. And again, I remember my mum wearing that and she knows I love silver. And she passed that on to me. And that little thing weighs a ton. And it's just an absolute beautiful piece and I know that I 
will and have worn this. I have actually wrapped it around and worn it as a bracelet as well. She also, I don't know if you remember my first video where I was showing some of my favorite things and I showed you some of my old things. She, and I had mentioned my mum's fob chain and she decided just recently that she was going to pass it on to me and it was like I put it out in the ether and she get now I added this piece here which I showed in my video but this is uh oh I want to say Royal Albert I think is a uh, Albert is the name I just can't think now I should have written it down but all of these are individually hallmarked and there's hallmarks all on the fob area there and I popped this there on that and I remember my mum wearing this and when I was younger I was allowed to wear that a lot this I just added today so you can have a look but it did break and she lost a couple of links she told me and as you can see there there's the other kind of link that goes with it but it is absolutely beautiful and I'm, I'm getting I don't want it to be too blurry but she said, I want you to have it and I want you to enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I'm giving it to you. And she did. She just decided one day, just recently, not long ago, uh, maybe a week ago, that, um, that she wanted me to have that. And so that I will wear because I love it and I treasure it. And I have fond memories of my mum wearing it. I remember my father loved antique jewellery and would go to antique sales and things and would buy some of the most beautiful things and pieces. And it's funny when Jason Adams, you know, I, I, I watch um, Jason a lot and I'm sure all of you guys know who he is and everything. It just, there's so many things there that I look at and I, I, I always say to my dad, we're going to have to sit one day and you're going to have to see this guy's channel and he has all the stuff you love and that you used to like used he used to just collect the most amazing things but over the years they got rid of a lot of stuff unfortunately because the you know moving and traveling and all that sort of stuff but i really want him to sit down and watch jason's channel and really enjoy uh his content because i know that my dad will he will really enjoy it and Okay, we'll get to my daughter's forever piece. And so when she turned 18, we decided that uh, her father and I had decided that we were going to get her a piece of jewellery and it was going to be a forever piece. And she chose the jeweller that she wanted. And my daughter was a, an incredible student. She worked really hard all through school. Uh, an amazing human truly and I'm not saying it because it's my daughter and I'm you know tooting her own horn she's an incredible human being and she has impeccable style and loves beautiful things and always has ever since she was a little girl and she has a thing about textures and feeling and and really has emotion when it comes to things and so she was an elite volleyball um, athlete for five years you know worked really hard you know trained 24 hours a week was studying all that kind of jazz and when she graduated there because of all of her efforts and who she was as a human being we said pick a jewelry store or a place where you'd like to get a piece of jewelry so she chose Cartier people Cartier that's the place she chose and she'd always had her eye on this particular ring she had loved this ring for quite a long time and here's a little box and it was an amazing experience we went there and I remember we both looked at each other and said oh I guess we're going to Cartier and the ring that she wanted was this beautiful Jostin Clou it's a very avant-garde ring and it was something she absolutely loved and I'm not going to wear that but I will show it to you it's her favorite it's like an everyday piece. She wears it all the time. And this is something she's going to have forever. And she, she'll know that her parents gave her that. And that is something that will stay, you know, with her till the end, you know. And then whatever, you know, choices she makes with, when she has a family or, you know, whatever, uh, that's going to be a part of her. But she'll always remember her mother and father and the experience we had in Cartier. 
and I tell you what, it was it was one of the best experiences I had ever had in my life. Walking in there, the, the way they looked after us, the way they made her feel special, it was just the most unique experience in itself. And so those are the things that are uh, inherited pretty much. Uh, I'm just trying to see what else I've got. I forgot to bring out a few other things, but that's okay. Uh, so I'll show you some rings that are my daughter's. And this is a contemporary modern garnet ring that she loves to wear. She combines her gold with her silver, but she has a particular style. So this is from the mid-century and it's absolutely beautiful and it's absolutely just one of my favourite pieces and it doesn't fit me. So it's hers. And this one here used to be mine and it's bezel set um, amethyst ring set in silver and that had a lot of wear. I wore that quite a lot. And this was her birthday present. One of her birthday presents last year. And I think that stone, I want to say tourmaline, but I'm not sure. And it's again in bezel set. And so she combines her gold with her silver. And she does an amazing job uh, with all of those pieces. Oh, yes. Here we have this bracelet. And uh, this is my mum's and it's amber with silver. And inside it's that, um, the etching uh, that they do with this Baltic amber. And in there, I think it's a crane. I do believe it's a crane and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's just this little tiny, you know, little, you know, pop in thing with the little safety clasp. And it came in its beautiful little box and uh, that was passed on to her as well. And uh, here I was saying, I don't have any amber. And then, you know, I, I, I remembered that I did have a ring and that was gone. And then I started in one week, I found, you know, so many little pieces of amber. And then here's mum giving this um, to, to my daughter. And it was just such a lovely surprise, you know. I was just so happy for her. And I think, folks, that's all pretty much, oh, this beautiful perfume bottle because I did find two gorgeous perfume bottles at the flea market and uh, this, again, was uh, my mother's stuck. I don't, because the stopper, um, the under, I'm not taking it off because she's put a rubber band under there and it's hallmarked and uh, this was um, always on her dresser and and it was something my dad had bought for her and it's all hallmarked there and it's absolutely beautiful and it's got all that beautiful work around the stopper and it used to just lay my mum used to have a whole crystal vanity set and stuff and used to have all these beautiful bottles and things like that and this was one of them and she decided to pass that on to us as well and it's quite a beautiful beautiful bottle and I don't know I think it's a uh, it's it's antique. I, I I can't put a date on it because I haven't checked the hallmarks. I haven't looked at any of that as yet, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And this is what I found at the flea markets, which I absolutely love, was this old uh, Eiffel Tower with sterling silver and ivory stopper. And it was sitting in a box with this. And this is not that valuable. I did have a look at both of them. They vary in prices. I don't care. I love them. I got them. I got them both for a very, very good price. I was very, very happy that day. And both the stoppers are sterling. And this is obviously beautiful, as you can see. Can you see that? I just feel like my there's too much going on in the background. And I've only got the blue thing. Hang on. Maybe I'll try that. And just how gorgeous that perfume bottle is and I do love perfume bottles I have quite a few not many but I'm collecting them as I go along and uh, and yeah so and when I found these I was just absolutely thrilled and the guy said you know you can have them 
for this price for two and I just said yeah thank you very much and this sort of dates back to the early I'm going to say 1900 what I found was 19 oh something 19 oh I can't remember folks okay I'm having a drawing moment that's why I need to take notes but I found that as well so those three go together beautifully and that's a little collection you know that uh that just kind of all matches up and you can have them on your dresser and it's just such a beautiful little thing to have so the other thing i found was this gorgeous necklace it's got a barrel clasp it kind of gives me haskell feels i don't know why maybe it's because of the pearly kind of things but i found this little piece at the at the flea markets and i absolutely loved it and i thought you know it was a couple of dollars and it was just so beautiful and i can see myself wearing that with a t-shirt and a pair of jeans and rocking it with a blazer and feeling good and it's just got so much movement and it's got a bit of wear actually uh, the ab crystals are all in great condition there's some damage there which i can fix uh it's sort of come loose a little bit of the wiring has come loose but all in all it was just a gorgeous gorgeous little beautiful sort of bib style statement necklace which i loved and that was you know that was some that was a happy moment there for me uh, i found a couple of other vintage necklaces uh this time glass uh, an old sort of with uh i looked them up and these are murano um, beads this gorgeous can you see the clasp there um gee my, my camera is really blurry today i'm gonna do it this way so you can see the clasp on it there it's got this beautiful clasp and it's got this beautiful colored blue glass um beads and they're absolutely gorgeous and it sits absolutely beautifully. Let me just grab that and that and that and bring it all together. And you can see the AB um, crystal. Well, AB crystal. Can you say AB crystal or AB glass or whatever it is? But look at those colours and look at how beautiful that is. And that made me really, really happy. I love that. And like I said, once things sort of settle and we've got, you know, my little, like I said, you know, there are a few things here, like if you're interested and you're genuinely interested, you know, and you you, you want to inquire about a, a piece, please do. Don't hesitate to contact me. I've been lucky to um, have so much, many people email me. So, and, you know, I will respond, you know, and, uh, you know, just just inquire, just, you know, stamp the time or say, you know, um, blue glass necklace at 42.41 or whatever it is. And uh, and we can I can give you a price, you know, and this is really lovely. And I just love the color of all of that. That is pretty special. And I found another glass necklace and again with a very similar clasp, uh, which is like the one I just showed you. Can you see that? Oh gosh, I don't know what's going on with the camera today. There you go, you can see that. And this is a three strander and it's really beautiful. It needs a good wash though, it really does. So I need to give it a good wash and this is all glass and there, they're uh they're just beautiful if you can have a look um i'm going to pull the camera back a little bit and in between they've got those sort of seed glass beads and that's italian as well and i absolutely love that and i thought that's really beautiful this can still be worn today with anything you know and i love that and i love that it's in great condition it's in absolute beautiful condition and it's stunning it's absolutely stunning so I said yes to that. The other necklace I found was this gorgeous shell necklace. And it's absolutely beautiful. And it's got gold tones. And it's got a shepherd's hook on the back, which uh, I might make it a little bit longer so you guys can see. I'm just 
just fiddling around here guys just bear with me and is this just beautiful gorgeous beautiful shell necklace and i don't think the camera is doing it any justice but it is absolutely stunning there are no shells missing there's no damage the condition is absolutely sensational uh, it's been very well looked after and I absolutely love that. Kind of gives me, you know, South Pacific vibes. And there's the back with the shepherd's hook. It looks like one of them's missing there, actually. That's all right. That can come off. It doesn't really take away from the necklace. But it's absolutely who I was saying. There's no damage and no nothing. But oh, by the way, there's a little piece missing there. So I do apologize. And I think that's just gorgeous. That's fun. That's a beautiful piece as well. And I really love it. And the light catches on it. And it's really a lot shinier. Maybe back here you can see the sort of the shine of uh, how it works and just how gorgeous that is. Yeah, so I found that. I also found uh, no more necklaces, but some earrings. These guys here with... They're on their sterling silver with garnet. They kind of give me a Celtic feel, these type of earrings. You know, again, they're 925, uh, marked 925. Uh, I think they're a garnet. I'm not really sure. I, 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 I've got to get on top of my stones and um, understanding them. But they actually go really beautiful with this glass that I've got. And uh, I love using glass to show the earrings. I was going to get those, um, and I probably will. Uh, to display them for when I do uh, sell pieces online. But I just love showing things on glass because I love glass. I found these. Again, if you can see, they look hand-painted. They have this Art Nouveau feel. I don't know uh, how old they are. The hooks are not in the best condition and they will need to be replaced because they look like they've been, whoops, here we go, a bit, they were loved hang on you can't see that so it doesn't matter but they're gorgeous and I absolutely love them and I love that kind of style and I thought you know what I'm going to grab them and you know repair them or I don't know but I really want to wear them I have to wear them before I sell them I just think they're absolutely lovely and they're transparent and you know they've been looks like they've been hand painted you know, from, I don't know, the glass is just beautiful. I just love those. And I found those. And the other ones I found were these gorgeous little uh, amethyst and sterling. Just simple. I had found a similar pair to these a while back. And, well, I think they were pretty much the same, to be honest. And these ones are amethyst and sterling and they're just set like that and I found another one and I just kind of said yes to that I love them and they were you know I, I couldn't refuse those at all uh, I also found this gorgeous necklace uh, which is beautiful and I have decided to pass on to my daughter because she has the earrings to match. And that is, that's actually signed. There's a signature in the back there somewhere on the back. And uh, again, is it a garnet? Is it glass? Is it, you know, something else? I don't know. But again, it gives me that kind of, I don't know, that Art Nouveau-y feeling. You know, I could be off the mark as far as that's concerned. But when I feel or see Art Nouveau, I kind of see that, that kind of style. I don't know, just the flow of it. And it goes down to there and it does have an extension on the back. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely lovely. It's very feminine, very much, um, yeah, very fine, um, very fine piece. Uh, I found... couple of check brooches 
One isn't in great condition, unfortunately, but I want to try and save it or, or fix it up a little bit. It's quite beautiful. It has its little C clasp with its little green stone and uh, it, it needs a little bit of love, you know, TLC. But I love that and I was so happy to find that because I love these types, you know, of brooches. They make me quite happy. And that's glass, of course, and it's just beautiful. And this tiny little one here, which is really lovely and it's in really, really good condition, is this gorgeous little, you know, uh, red, with that, that red pop. And uh, again, you know, a little sort of C-clasp in the back, a bit of wear in the, you know, look at that, it's been bent a few times. But it's just absolutely beautiful and I love it. And the colour just pops, doesn't it? It's just great. So, yeah, I found that as well. And I thought that was terrific. Then I found these little, oh, I got the wrong ones. Oh, I'm not sure if I've showed you these, but I got these a while ago. I picked the wrong bags. I put things in bags so they don't get damaged. But these are gorgeous. These are really old. And I tested them and they test for gold. And they're like a, they're like a closo nay, but I don't know what the other word is. They're teeny tiny and if you can see the enameling in there and whatever. Anyway, I did a test on them and they did test for gold, even though they look like they're brass there. Uh, and they they're quite old beads and uh, and they they did, they tested gold and I can't remember what it was I think it was like 10k or something like that and I just loved them I thought they were absolutely gorgeous and they were very very cute so I said yes to those that was just you know another wonderful little little surprise along the way uh, and this sort of oh my gosh what's the name of the artist who was in, in an art nouveau oh I Oh my gosh, it begins with M and it's not coming to me. And I found her, um, is it Mucha? Um, oh. oh, guys, I cannot remember. I I should have written this down and, and that's a bit silly not remembering. But anyway, um, I do know this artist very well. I actually have a book on his work. Oh, gosh, I want to do a search um, but I can't now. But anyway, I found her. She's gorgeous. She's pewter and uh, she's not old. She's just, uh, well, she could be. And someone's put this thing on the back of her uh, brooch. She, you know, she might be, might have some sort of age, but I don't believe she's from back way back then. But she's gorgeous. Look at the detail. Look at her face and look at that. And that is very Art Nouveau. She's very precious. Oh, I can't remember him. Okay, we'll leave him for now. And um, one more thing. Is it one more thing that I want to show you, I think? Yeah, two more things. Three. Three more things. I found this and I just, give me a sec because I need to get my, it's a Franklin Mint and it's a Mary McFadden watch and it's from the 90s. And I know people collect these and, um, and I found this and I found it interesting. I just loved all the detail on this and I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, it has a mother of pearl face and I know that people collect these watches and uh, they love them and it has a little safety sort of clip there and you can pop it open. It's quite a strong click, which is wonderful. And I just thought... Someone's going to love that, you know, it's lovely. It's sort of kind of got all this kind of sort of filigree kind of work on the outside. And I thought it was beautiful. And I know it's very unusual and not many people are wearing watches, but you could wear that as an accessory. You know, like I know that there's some watches, I've got my mum's, one of my mum old brutalist style watch that my dad gave her in the 70s. And it does still work, I bet I just don't use it as a watch. I wear it as a bracelet and I combine it with things. So it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. I just thought that was really lovely. I really like that. And I found this a while ago, and I'm not sure if I showed you guys, 
but this is pretty old um, which you can tell from you know the the hinges and the c-clasp and unfortunately it's not in great condition um, you know it's there's so many scratches on that picture which makes me really sad but I loved it so much I had to have it I loved the look of that and I thought it's beautiful and I think I do believe it is brass and it needs a, you know, I'm not, I don't even know if I'm going to clean it. I just think it's just beautiful as is. And uh, I love the little story that is going on there. But unfortunately, yes, there is a bit of damage with that. But gosh, that's stunning. It's really beautiful. And I love that. And I've been lucky to come across some of these pieces, you know, because it's sort of, I haven't had time to just go and 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 thrift and and being able to go to the flea markets and go to a couple of thrift stores and coming across a few of these beautiful beautiful things has just kind of and they're they're historical things you know they're that, that vintage thing so there has a history there is a story someone wore them someone loved them you know and and that's something we love you know especially for us that love to collect all the old things or vintage things and things like that and yeah it, it, it's always pretty special and then when you know I, I do love this whole thing and then I found this little guy and he's from oh she it's quite a feminine watch isn't it uh, from the 19 I would say maybe 1930s you know um maybe I don't know early 50s it does have a signature in the back hang on a second I will tell you and maybe I am wrong um, oh my gosh get ready for this well I think I got the date all wrong um, okay get ready for what's inscribed behind this uh, to Jan love John on the 24th of the 12th 1963 so the watch itself is the 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 label is unicorn it has 17 jewels and the hands look like to be gold markersite with a few markersites missing so it looks like that has been changed the band because it doesn't seem to suit the watch so I'm wondering if the watch is older than the band and it was a gift. It could have been his mother's watch or something. Or it could have been made in 1963. I don't know. And it has a safety chain and it was gorgeous. And when I found that, because it was so beautiful, I absolutely loved it. I had to have it. So there you go. I didn't even know that there was this inscription in the back like that. I did see the writing, but gosh, it's funny what you, you, you miss, isn't it? Anyway, one more thing and then I'm done and I'm going to leave you all in peace and um, and and say all my thank yous and everything like that. I found this gorgeous uh, mid-century sort of 60s box, which is absolutely beautiful. And I got it for my daughter because you can never have enough jewellery boxes and it plays Fleur de Lis. There's my curtains in the background. There's me. There's my camera. <laughs> And it's just this beautiful, beautiful, mid-century, gorgeous little, um, I'm assuming that might be like a lucite type thing on the top. I don't know. It's just beautiful. It looks like, you know, an old coffee table or an old stereo they used to have in the 60s, you know. Um, that's just gorgeous. I love it. And I think, to be honest with you, that is it for today. But I did want to do some content because I've been home all day today. It's been my only day that I've been home and I've had some time to catch up with my chores, had time to catch up with some of the channels. Uh, I got to go on to um, uh, some lives and, you know, or Tanya's live. I got to go on to that. And then I sort of got caught up with my chores. I got to catch up with... Uh, uh, I've still had to catch up on a couple, I think, of Jason Adams' channels. I got to almost finish Kirsten Red's uh, auction channel. Uh, so, I've, you know, when I have time and, you know, when I'm potting around and stuff, I love to put my headphones on and have, you know, podcasts going on. But when there's jewellery being shown and things like that, 
I, I can't do that, you know, because I, I want to see what everyone is, you know, seeing. And sometimes it's just trying to catch up with so much. And yeah, and I have, I've missed out on a lot. I know that because I've been so busy with having to deal with what I've been dealing with. But it's been a ride, that's for sure. And uh, everything has been absolutely terrific. Now, what I want from you guys, before I forget, is I'm going to put a message on my community board on my community thing to say I'm going live on this day and we are going to be doing my giveaway. Now, as from today, I cannot believe it. You could have knocked me over with a feather. I'm up to 261 subscribers, which is, hello, you know, so good. Uh, I, and I'm so thrilled and I'm so happy to have you all here. And, you know, I know I, I do chitter chatter a bit and you know I, I i know some people don't like that but that is that is just who i am and this is my channel and i i i i, I can't hide i mean i can go straight into the jewelry and give you everything and there'll be days when i'll be doing that but sometimes i really enjoy having a chat to you getting you updated and you know touching base with you and explaining certain things and you know, talking about the beautiful emails I receive, you know, i.e. my style, my makeup, whatever it is that people want to know, you know, prices, how, you know, all those sorts of things. And I feel like, you know, you guys are just absolutely gorgeous. They're out there in that beautiful, you know, jewelry world. And, and I have had nothing but positivity and some beautiful positive feedback. Yes, there's been the occasional one that hasn't been too happy and that's fine. That's each their own. Just move on. You don't need to stay here. You know, you don't need to, you know, whatever. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. It's fine and it's okay. And I am just so happy and thrilled to have you all here on board. And I, I'm thrilled every time I get a message, I get an email, you know, and it just makes my heart sing. And it makes me, you know, realize that I'm okay. I'm doing good. People are loving this and it makes me happy, you know, and and I love it. And I, I, I'm, you know, in a place where I never thought I'd ever be. And, and I'm doing something I love. And I really love this. And I love you guys. And I truly, truly, truly love you guys. And I am thankful and grateful for everything, for everything, for being here and, and being able to do this video for you guys, but also you guys connecting with me and supporting me and loving me. And I really appreciate it. And that's pretty much it, but I will be putting out a community notice and I will say on this day, I will be going live and I will be doing a live and I will be doing a giveaway because I have well over 200 subscribers now. And it's just my way of saying thank you and telling you that I appreciate you and, you know, and I'm so grateful that you're here. That's about it, I reckon. And uh, I, yeah, that's it. That's about it. So it's time to bid you all farewell. And uh, again, you know, I love you and I thank you. And um, I will be seeing you on the flip side. Bye for now. Mwah.